And I think we're now going to go to a question from, uh, from, from Ukraine. Thank you, Prime Minister. Daria Kaliniuk. Um, I had anti-corruption action center from Ukraine. I, I passed the border a couple of days ago. I'm from Kiev. Most of my family, uh, most of my team members are still in Ukraine, in Kiev, in Lviv. Uh, a woman uh, from uh, my team is now in Bila Tserkva, and she is there with two kids, and uh, Russian military is over there, and she is so much afraid that she will be shot. Kharkiv, the city where I was studying, was bombarded today, fully, the downtown square. So you're talking about the stoicism of Ukrainian people, but Ukrainian women and Ukrainian children are in deep fear because of bombs and missiles which are going from the sky. And Ukrainian people are desperately asking for the West to protect our sky. We are asking for the no-fly zone. We are saying in response that it will trigger World War III. But what is the alternative, Mr. Prime Minister? To observe how our children are, instead of, mis instead of uh, planes, are protecting NATO from the missiles and bombs? What's the alternative for the no-fly zone? We have planes here, we have air defense system in Poland, in Romania. NATO has this air defense. At least this air defense could shield the Western Ukraine so that these children with women could come to the border. It's impossible now to right. cross the border. There are 30 kilometers of lines. Imagine crossing the border with a baby or with two children. I'm so glad that Samantha Power is coming here to the border from the Polish side. Let her come to the border from the Ukrainian side and see that. Britain guaranteed our security under Budapest Memorandum. So you're coming to Poland. You're not coming to Kiev, Prime Minister. You're not coming to Lviv because you're afraid. Because NATO is not willing to defend. Because NATO is afraid of the World War III. But it is already started. And these are Ukrainian children who are there taking the hit. You're talking about more sanctions, Prime Minister. But Roman Abramovich is not sanctioned. He's in London. His children are not in the bombardments. His children are there in London. Putin's children are in Netherlands, in Germany, in mansions. Where are all these mansions seized? I don't see that. I see that my family members, that my team members are saying that we are crying. We don't have where to run. Well, this is what is happening, Prime Minister. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for, uh, for your questions. And, and thank you for, for getting here today. And I'm, I'm glad that you, you have been able to, to get here. And uh, look, I just want to, to say that I'm acutely conscious that there is not enough that we can do uh, to, as, the, as the UK government uh, to help in the way that you want. And I've got to be honest about that. And when you talk about the, the no-fly zone, uh, as I said to Volodymyr uh, Zelensky, I, I think a, a couple of times, uh, unfortunately, the implication of, of that is that the, uh, the UK and, uh, will be engaged in, in shooting down uh, Russian planes, uh, will be engaged in direct combat uh, with Russia. That's not something uh, that... Uh, we can do or that we've uh, that we've envisaged and I think the consequences of that would be uh, Truly very very difficult to uh, to control what we can do is all the things that we are uh, doing already and uh, Providing as much help and support to the Ukrainians as we as we can and amongst other things uh, the UK is, is intensifying our support uh, not just for for Poland uh, but for the Baltic countries uh, and for all NATO's uh, eastern frontier. And if, if Putin thinks he's going to get uh, less NATO, he's going to push back uh, on NATO as a result of this action, he is going to be gravely disappointed. All that's happening as a result of what he is doing is that he is strengthening the resolve, not just of the Ukrainians, but the resolve of the West uh, as well. And to get back to your, you know, your fundamental question about why isn't the West actually coming and giving direct military support? Well, there, basically for the reasons uh, that I've given. But I, I think you will also accept that the crisis, the, 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 the tragic crisis of uh, the Ukrainians is moving governments and peoples, think of the Germans, think of the EU, uh, to do things uh, that would hitherto have been uh, unthinkable. And, uh, and, and that is a measure 
of the sympathy that Ukraine is currently uh, evoking around the world. And I have no doubt that that sympathy is going to be so strong and, and going to grow that people will not rest, as I've said, until this injustice is reversed and Putin is seen, not just uh, fails, but see, is seen to have failed in Ukraine. And uh, I think the whole international community will work together to ensure uh, that you, your family, are able to live in a sovereign and independent Ukraine. And I'm sorry it's going to take time. I'm sorry it's going to be difficult. And I'm sorry for all the, the tragedy and suffering uh, that you've experienced. But thank you very, very much uh, for coming today and asking your question. I think, I think everybody here has really appreciated it. Thank you.